and not necessarily those of the staff or management of KLAV. This is Paul Montalongo, host of the Get a Grip Business Show. If you want more leads, more sales, and more closings, you must tune in to my Get a Grip Business Radio Show this Friday at 2 p.m. My guest will be Grant Cordone, author of the best-selling book, Sell or Be Sold. Grant will answer my hard-driving questions about what it takes to get more leads, more sales, and increase your closing ratios in this uber-competitive marketplace. If you want to maximize every sales opportunity, then tune in to the Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Show this Friday at 2 p.m. And now, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, coming in at six foot one and weighing in at your guess is as good as ours. The host of Get a Grip Business Radio, Paul Montelongo. I want me some Paul Montelongo. <laughs> Good afternoon. Welcome to the Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Show, where the American Free Enterprise System is encouraged. It is endorsed, and it is very hard at work today. This is where serial entrepreneurship is a way of life, and we talk about what's real, what's profitable, and what works in business and free enterprise in your life. This is KLAV AM 1230, the talk of Las Vegas, where it's another gorgeous spring day in the valley. Of course. And welcome to my accomplice in crime here, Heather Vale Goss. How Hi, are you? Good. good. How are you? Welcome. Glad to have you here again. So um, the show is being broadcast live on Face uh, on uh, my uh, website paulmontalongolive.com you can also follow the show at facebook paul montalongo fan and on twitter at paul montalongo we have a great show in store for you today today we're going to talk about simplifying the marketing of your business i think that most people they just they're just making their marketing way too difficult yeah way over complicated over complicated and they just are not getting the results and so today our guest Richard Krofcheck is going to help us um, simplify our marketing business also the part that I really am looking forward to is going to talk about the mistakes that we need to avoid in order to have a successful Gotta know marketing that. yeah definitely. Right. but you know this whole this whole idea of being an entrepreneur and uh, this whole show revolves around uh, uh, entrepreneurship and I find that there are four personality traits that all entrepreneurs must have. Uh, this is uh, specifically from an article that uh, was written by Michael Gerber, the author of the E Myth Revisited in the E Myth books, mm -hmm. and I find it's very, very applicable here. And so, you know, he talks about these four personality traits, and uh, uh, we have. I think we all of us have all of these traits. Uh, yeah. Um, but but we all have strengths. Would you agree? Right. Yeah. Strengths, yeah. weaknesses. Yeah. Right. So uh, he talks about the dreamer. The dreamer is the least understood of the four dimensions or the four traits that he says that entrepreneurs have. Many think dreaming is the same as daydreaming, but of course, uh, every entrepreneur has a dream. The dreamer must have a much larger vision in place. His dream has purpose, the same purpose that lives within the entrepreneur's heart. So it's not the dream of having a, a, a bigger house or uh, more money in the bank, that <laughs> kind of thing. Better car. <laughs> Better car. That's not the dream that we're talking about for entrepreneurs, if you really think about it. Yeah, it's the vision. It's the vision. It's, it's where is this business going to be three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now? You know, there are businessmen in Japan that have a 300-year business plan. What? Are you kidding me? That is – that, that – that's that's right. That goes way beyond obviously their lifespan. Yeah, yeah. But a 300-year business plan that is dreaming. That is having a vision for the future of your enterprise. Yeah. And so very true. I I find that that uh, I agree with here with Michael Gerber in that all entrepreneurs have a dream, a really really big dream. It's how do they get it done? Yeah, exactly. That is the trick. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I've seen so many dreams just not come to fruition. Right. The second uh, personality trait that he talks about is the thinker. Now, the thinker, he says, is the dreamer's most important companion. And, and I think we want to establish here at the beginning that we are all, all four of these types. Right. We have the strengths, as we said, and we want to attach ourselves with or 
companion ourselves with people who have the strengths in the other dimensions that he talks about. Yeah. So this is the case that he's talking about here. The thinker is the dreamer's most important companion. The dreamer represents the what, and the thinker represents the methodical how. Mm, yeah. In other words, what are the bullet points? What are the how-tos? What are the one, two, threes? What are the analyticals of how? how we're going to get to this place. How are we going to make the dream happen? Right, exactly. You'll find that your thinkers, I, uh, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I feel, no. You'll find that your thinkers, I think, are the ones that uh, are more your, uh, your analytical types. They're yeah. your accountants. They're your financial analysts. They're your computer people that really make the business uh, hum because they, they make it go. They put it in place. The next dimension of uh, entrepreneur that Michael Gerber talks about is what he calls the storyteller. Oh, we know a lot of them. The, <laughs> the storyteller. Now, when I first read this, I thought, okay, is this the guy that, uh, uh, the guy or the, the, the lady that, that can really talk up the business, you know, <laughs> talk up the, the uh, tell the stories about the business? He says the storyteller invokes excitement in others when conveying the dream. He knows that without encouragement and excitement, no dream has a chance to become reality. So he begins to speak the dream or to sing the song of the dream. I Aww, like that definitely. How nice, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So we had an aw you had an awe moment there. <laughs> All right. The storyteller, in essence, represents life and is where the dreamer and the thinker find voice. So I think in every organization, if it's that entrepreneur, it's the person who started the organization, if he can take that dream and then articulate it out, encourage the people that he surrounds himself with, motivate them, inspire them, and lead them, then, then the dream begins to develop and other people get attached to the dream. Yeah, and I love how he's layering these on here. You have the dream, then you think about it, then you tell people about it. It's, it's great. Yeah. So the final um, dimension that he, that he uh, says here is, that is called the leader. The leader is who assumes the responsibility to move the dream forward. He takes the pieces of the puzzle, that of the dreamer, the thinker, and the storyteller. He puts them together. The execution of the dream rests on his shoulders. He sees where the dream is going, how it is going to get there, and when it is going to get there, and what it will like when everything, what it will look like when everything is said and done. So the leader realizes that the big picture is a product of all the small things done and done very, very well. Yeah, totally makes sense. And you think about some of the great leaders in business that uh, that we're all familiar with, you know, like uh, J uh, Steve Jobs, and even though he just passed the 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 legacy of his business, of his dreaming, and of his thinking, and of the story that he would tell the public, and of his leadership in the organization. Well, the organization just continues to thrive, in even in spite of some of the negative things that people say about the organization yeah even now so yeah, for sure uh, all aspects let me ask you this so you've been in business for a while which one of these do you think is your is your specialty I think I am more of a dreamer and a little bit of storyteller but a lot of thinker as well <laughs> so. <laughs> so basically you're three out of the four and you'll give yourself the fourth because right yeah well yeah leadership is not my preference, but I have some leadership strengths. Well, so again, Michael Gerber says that all, all four of all four of these dimensions need to be is what um, entrepreneurs possess. The, all four of them, right? Yeah. So, okay. Um, so you ask yourself, you know, have we, have you nurtured these dimensions? Have you nurtured these characteristics with your own personality? Um, all four are functional. All four um, are necessary, and they can be developed. And in order to have a long-term sustaining sustained business, you know, yeah, okay. and that's what the show is about is is about how to, to how to sustain your business, how to grow your business, how to develop develop more leads, develop more pro, uh, customers, more prospects, you know, sell more goods and services, and have a long-term sustained business. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, in line with that, we have a great uh, a great um, guest today. And uh, Richard Krofcheck will be with us in a few minutes, and we'll be with us uh, right after these messages. We're going to do some work for the sponsors. Here we cool. go. When it comes to understanding your credit, knowledge is key. 
That's why at Alliance Credit Restoration, we work hard to take the necessary steps to improve your credit. Alliance Credit Restoration can dispute information on your credit report that is outdated, inaccurate, or unverifiable. Plus, with their knowledgeable and professional staff, Alliance Credit Restoration offers a personalized approach in handling each client's file. And getting started is easy. If your credit score is holding you back, visit AllianceCreditRestore.com today. With 24-hour access to your account, constant updates, and one-on-one -on -one customer service, there's never been a better time to start living the life you deserve. Don't just fix your credit, enhance your future by calling Alliance Credit Restoration now at 702-834-8150. That's 702-834-8150 or visit AllianceCreditRestore.com. Log on now and get your free report, The 7.5 Most Commonly Made Mistakes of Credit Repair. As more Americans become disillusioned with traditional investment choices, the trend of self-directed IRAs is growing and no trend company is more preferred than preferred trust company LLC with their 30 years of combined experience preferred trust company makes self-direction easy a self-directed IRA with preferred trust company offers you maximum flexibility convenience 24-hour access and a host of tax advantages learn more about self-directed IRAs by downloading the free document self-directed IRAs taking financial control of your retirement at preferred trust company.com Call Preferred Trust Company now and get started at 702-990-7892 or visit PreferredTrustCompany.com. Call us with your questions at 731-1230. Now, here again, the host of Get a Grip Business Radio, Paul Montelongo. Welcome back to the Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Show. American Free Enterprise here is encouraged, endorsed, and hard at work. So we're talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking today about how to market your business, how to really launch um, your business even more than what you currently have. And uh, so our guest this this afternoon is Richard Krofcheck. And uh, why don't you tell us about Richard, please, Heather? Okay. Richard Krofcheck is a best-selling author, keynote speaker, business strategist, human potential expert, and lifelong entrepreneur, also known as Mr. Blueprint. He developed the Ultimate Success Blueprint, which is based on proven success traits using his Elate system. He's a founder of training company Success Now International and the nonprofit Richard M. Krofcheck Foundation, was a featured expert in the movie Pass It On, and has been profiled in numerous magazines, radio, and TV programs. So he should feel right at home with us. Richard, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Welcome, Richard. How are you? Absolutely peachy. How are you doing, Peachy. Paul? You know, he said that in the green room, peachy. too. Peachy. Peachy. You're I haven't peachy. heard that in years. <laughs> I like a guy with a good attitude. So you heard our list of, uh, of the uh, four dimensions of a... Uh, entrepreneur a few moments ago. Wh which uh, dimension would you put yourself in, Richard? Well, like you said, we're a little all of both, all of everything, I guess. Um, primarily a storyteller. Yeah. Uh, because I think if you give tips and uh, tricks and strategies to a lot of things, people forget that, but they will remember a story. And it kind of worked out for Jesus pretty well. I hear there was a best-selling book about that. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> stories story sell, stories sell. Whether it's in marketing, whether it's in personal relationships, anything, story sell. Okay, we'll go with that. So you have marketed yourself or you've branded yourself as Mr. Blueprint. Um, why Mr. Blueprint? What kind of blueprints do you teach people? What, what What's going on with this whole blueprint thing? I, I know we're going to go somewhere with this, but I just give us your rendition here. Of, <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, give us, tell us here why Mr. Blueprint. Because... If you will, last you know over over recent shows we've talked about how to brand yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and I find this a very interesting brand that you've put together. So, why don't you give us your explanation of Mr. Blueprint? Well, Mr. Blueprint is a lot easier to spell than my last name. It's like, can I buy a vowel, please? I'll agree with that. That's for sure. <laughs> so, um, uh, it all kind of goes back to my childhood. I was born in a small town outside of Chicago, about thirty miles outside of Chicago, called Lake in the Hills, Illinois. Population. 5,000 when I moved away, so it's not exactly a major metropolitan area. And the great thing about growing up in a small town in the Midwest is that everybody knows everybody. The bad thing about growing up in a small town is that everybody <laughs> knows everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and when I was about 12 years old, during that summer, um, there was something going on down the block from my street, and there's one vacant lot. And 
when you live in such a small town, all the neighborhood cake all the neighborhood kids take notice because nothing ever happens in a small town. <laughs> so um, over a period of about a week or two, I was watching all these trucks roll up to this lot and they would open up the back of the truck and they'd all gather around and look at these rolls of paper. You know, after about a week or so of, of watching this, I decided to go down to the work site. And when I was in high school, I gra when I graduated, I was six foot tall, 135 pounds. I was so skinny, I had to run around the shower to get wet. Matter of fact, somebody put that in my yearbook too. <laughs> but so, I'm bang. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I, when I was 12, I was even younger. And so I marched, yeah. down, I marched down to the, uh, yeah, I was really tiny back then. When I was, uh, so I marched onto the work site and I, I asked for the person in charge, you know, stumbled down there and said, well, who's in charge here? And he's like, yeah, me kid. What the heck do you want? I'm kind of busy here. I said, well, I've been watching this for a few weeks of you guys, you know, rolling, looking at these rolls of paper going out at work. And then at the end of the day, looking at these rolls of paper again before you leave. I go, what are those? And he said, those are blueprints. I said, well, what's a blueprint? I'm 12 years old. I didn't have a clue. And he said, well, a blueprint is the exact specifications of how we're supposed to build this house. And if we don't build it to a fraction of an inch, the air conditioning may not work, the doors may not close, and if the foundation isn't set right, the whole house can come tumbling down around you. That is how vital a blueprint is. And I started thinking, well, if there's a blueprint for a house, there's got to be a blueprint, obviously, for computers, cars, transistors, radios. Well, that was back in the 80s. So. <laughs> Cassette tapes, I'm Walkman. sure. Walkman. <laughs> Walkman, exactly. So I said, there has to be a blueprint for just about everything in life. And it's just, it took me about 20 years to, to develop what I, what I called the elate system. And that elate system translates to every single area of your life, including marketing for your business. I, I like your analogy here or your use of, of the word blueprint. Uh, for many years, I had construction businesses, and obviously blueprints were an everyday thing. But I, but I find that there are a lot of business people that just have an objection to laying out an actual business plan or blueprint or, or, or a roadmap to direct their business. I mean, why? why? Why don't they get involved in this very specific plan for their business? As a former investment banker, uh, I've seen like a gazillion, I think, uh, business plans over the years. But in terms of building a house, Paul and Heather, would you start building a house and say, well, let's just put a piece of wood over there. Well, how high do you want it? Well, I don't know, about this high. Well, then, and you, and you start going it as you, you build it as you go. And nobody would ever build a house like that. If you don't have a foundation in place, your business is going to fail. And what I've learned over the decades is that uh, most people think of their business, let's just say, as, as a piece of property, because blueprints are easy to understand. People understand real estate. And you think of your business as a property, and they want to believe their business is a skyscraper, but yet they build their skyscraper on the foundation of a house and wonder why everything just collapses around them. The stronger your foundation for your business, the longer your business and the more successful your business is is going to go over the decades. Kind of reminds me of the three little pigs. <laughs> Pretty much so, yeah. The three little pigs of business. When you say the stronger the foundation is uh, for your business, what are, what are the things that an entrepreneur needs to focus on in order to have a strong foundation? In other words, what are the composites or the components, I mean, of that strong foundation? Richard? Well, it all kind of, the whole blueprint, the whole business marketing blueprint goes around my Elite system. Um, so maybe you should take a second and give us the... Yeah, what is Definition elate? of elate, elate, that acronym, E-L-A-T-E. -E. What do each of those stand for, please? Well, if you look in the World Dictionary, elate stands for happiness and joy. So who wouldn't want to bring happiness and joy to your business aww. and to your customers? Another awe moment. That's so sweet. That's two. <laughs> We're only allowed three. That's two. Okay. <laughs> only one more. All right. Elate, happiness. Go ahead. We've got the chalkboard over here to count how many elates. How many ahs. <laughs> uh, elate. Now, luckily, I've been a public speaker, spoke all over the world, and one of the places I like to go to is San Francisco. I just like the vibe. And about two miles outside of San Francisco is Alcatraz, the most secure prison in the world at the time. And what I found out is that, it's, that there's a prison more secure than Alcatraz, and that's the prison of your mind. We talk ourselves out of things all the time instead of saying, well, I can't do this and I can't do this. Instead of do that, reframe it to, well, how can I do this? If all my right. obstacles were, were way, how can I do this? So elate is escape your mental prison. 
And as we started talking about the blueprints, which, which we did a few minutes ago, people just can't build their business or their relationships on the fly. You have to know exactly what you want to do and then go out there and do that to develop your plan. Uh, of course, there's going to be potholes along the way. Okay, nothing is ever perfect in life. You know, kind of life happens in Murphy's Law. Whatever could happen does happen. So, but you still have to lay out your perfect, you have to lay out your blueprint, at least as a guide map, a roadmap is uh, how to go A to point B. So that would be um, L in the elite system. A in the elite system is access specialized knowledge. Now, if knowledge, if general knowledge was the thing that was going to make you the millions of dollars and serve millions of customers over your lifetime, if general knowledge was the case, teachers, educators would be the most wealthiest people in the world. Yeah, Unfor true. Unfortunately, they're underpaid <laughs> and undervalued in, in our They in our are world. the most underpaid people in our society, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I really like this, the A, E late, E L A, mm -hmm. access specialized knowledge, because I do find that to be the case that the more specialized knowledge or the more specialized or customized information that an entrepreneur has, the more the market will flock to his or her business. It even helps in the job market too, Paul. If you think about this, you have Bob and Sally. Bob and Sally both got a degree in finance, but Sally went on to get a become a certified public accountant. Now, if you were uh, interviewing them for a job, who would you hire, Bob with just a finance degree or Sally the finance degree and a certified public accountant? Right, you would hire the specialist, exactly. Exactly, so you, you wanna specialize in what you do and you access specialized knowledge, you can provide specialized knowledge to, to others because everybody has a lot of general knowledge, but very few people can actually niche themselves and be an expert in it and, and be able to make some big money. Yeah, do you find too that the specialization of your knowledge also re, uh, relates to the proposition that you present to your, your customer? It's like you know something they don't know and you can articulate it to them. Absolutely. But it goes a little bit further than that because if you have uh, a therapist in a phone book that charges $150 an hour or Dr. Phil that makes $40 million a year, who are you going to listen to? Well, it depends on your opinion of Dr. Phil. <laughs> right. But in general, it's the specialist that makes, more, that makes more money. So the more specialized you are and you put enough value in the marketplace, people will flock to you. You don't have to sell people people will sell themselves on you and your knowledge. The more value you have in the marketplace, the more money you're going to make. Right. And so you got uh, E-L-A-T and your T in Elate? Take massive inspired action. Oh, man. I mm, love that's that a good one. one. Yeah. I, don't, I don't care what you hear in the warm and fuzzy movies that are out there. Meditating in a BMW is not going to fall in your lap. And if it does, it's probably going to hurt you. Okay? <laughs> you have to go out there and do something. If you don't do anything, you're not going to make anything. And that's part of your blueprint system, isn't it? Or the part of having a blueprint altogether in a business is like the blueprint tells you what action steps to take and when and how to measure them. Absolutely. Now, these are five surprisingly simple steps. That doesn't mean it's easy, but they're surprisingly simple. Okay. I, uh, like, the, I like how it's inspired action, though. Yeah, you hear people say take massive action all the time, but inspired action, that's a different element that not everyone talks about. Yeah, I agree. I think that goes back to our um, uh, pre, you know, our, our information yeah, at the, the beginning of the show, the dreamer, yeah. right? Like you're, you're, you're passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, so the final um, uh, letter here, E in the elate system, represents? Extend your heart and give. Ah, that's number three. I thought that was that's number two. Sweet. I can't count. Okay. <laughs> Just, Just keeping track left. of the all's. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yeah, extend your heart and give. And what I mean by that is very simply, there are a lot of things that you could do in your community. There's a lot of things you could do in your religious organizations where you're around or, you know, whether you're donating your time, donating your efforts, donating your heart, helping others. And right. if you're single, you'll meet a lot of people that have the same mindset as you. Perfect dating example. And for businesses to extend your heart and give. So are you saying one should be in business so that they can date more? <laughs> <laughs> charities, I'm just, I'm just, charities, I'm nonprofits. You could date more and help people at the same time. Well, right this, <laughs> this extend your heart and give um, really gives a bigger purpose to what you're doing, right? And we have yeah, that does. when we have that big, big purpose, uh, the efforts that we put into our business they are easy, effortless, right? Exactly. And by the listeners of your show that are small business owners, I'm sure they could find one or two or three local 
charities that they can really attach themselves with become board of directors. It helps, it helps the charity and, and helps you at the same time. Good. So that's your relate system, and obviously you're teaching that uh, you you uh, want businesses and entrepreneurs to have a blueprint, a roadmap, an exact layout of where they're going in their business. Absolutely. I like that. So when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about, I'm going to have Richard answer the question, what can you as an entrepreneur do to get more clients immediately? Like in the next 30 days, what can you do to get more clients? When we return to the Paul Montalongo Business Show. As more Americans become disillusioned with traditional investment choices, the trend of self-directed IRAs is growing, and no trust company is more preferred than Preferred Trust Company, LLC. With their 30 years of combined experience, Preferred Trust Company makes self-direction easy. And self-direction doesn't mean you're on your own. Self-directed simply means that you have complete control over selecting and directing your own IRA or 401k investments. And the team at Preferred Trust Company is with you every step of the way. A self-directed IRA with Preferred Trust Company offers you maximum flexibility, convenience, 24-hour access, and a host of tax advantages. Learn more about self-directed IRAs by downloading the free document, Self-Directed IRAs, taking financial control of your retirement at PreferredTrustCompany.com. Call Preferred Trust Company now and get started at 702-990-7892. That's 702-990-7892 or visit PreferredTrustCompany.com. When it comes to understanding your credit, knowledge is key. If your credit score is holding you back, visit AllianceCreditRestore.com today. With 24-hour access to your account, constant updates, and one-on-one -on -one customer service, there's never been a better time to start living the life you deserve. Call Alliance Credit Restoration now at 702-834-8150. That's 702-834-8150 or visit AllianceCreditRestore.com. Log on now and get your free report, the 7.5 most commonly made mistakes of credit repair. Since real estate is often the biggest investment people make, you want to team up with a leader. That's why you need Sherry Pacheco with Realty One Group. According to Inc. 500, Realty One Group is one of the fastest growing companies in America, ranked number one in Nevada by Vegas Inc. and number seven in the nation by Real Trends 500. Whether it's finding a home, finding the best lender, or getting the most out of selling your home, call Sherry Pacheco at 702-595-1230. That's 702-595-1230. This is Get a Grip Business Radio. Call us with your questions at 731-1230. Now, here again, your host, Paul. Welcome back to the Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Show, where the American Free Enterprise System is encouraged, endorsed, and hard at work. Where serial entrepreneurship is a way of life, and we talk about what's real, what's profitable, and what works. My guest today is Richard Krofcheck, and Richard Krofcheck is a marketing expert. He's known as Mr. Blueprint, um, and in the first segment, we talked about having a blueprint, having a roadmap, having a business plan, and taking inspired action on that plan, but for our listeners out there, you know, the guy that's out there pounding the pavement, the guy that's out there in business, the guy that's out there trying to make ends meet, the guy that's out there, the, the, the gal that's out there, mm -hmm. that, and they're really trying to drive their business, and they need to generate more business immediately. What are three things that an entrepreneur can do to get more clients immediately? And by immediately, I mean like in the next monthly cycle, the next business cycle of 30 days. In 30 days, what can an entrepreneur do to get more clients? Give us your three best tips there. Well, first I would say you may have to make sure you properly identify your market. And what I mean by that is there's a, a little website called Google. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I've heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually do some research for some keywords to find out exactly because you may be in a market where there's not a lot of action or people aren't really searching for what you're trying to what you're trying to accomplish so you actually may be in the wrong market like the wrong geographical market or the wrong or the wrong business market product market you may be in the wrong product market is maybe not the right not wrong product market but approaching it in a way that people aren't going to be responsive to that okay so if an entrepreneur is out there googling 
-hmm. what will they Google? What are they looking for? What tidbits of information are they looking for to see if they are positioning themselves correctly? Well, one of the, uh, some very really easy things that you can do is actually uh, go to the Google keyword tool, which is free, and put in your competitor's website. Find out what all the things that your competitors are being found for on the internet, and then find out for what for you're being found for on the, on the internet, and it may be a disconnect there. Hmm. Okay. okay. So that's a way to identify your market. What's another thing that an entrepreneur can do to gather more business immediately? Okay. Uh, put more value in the marketplace. If you're a salesman, do you, do you write articles? Do you have YouTube videos? Do you tweet? Do you have a following? The more value, the more valuable you are to the marketplace, the more money you're going to make. Because regardless of how you think about yourself, you're being paid exactly to the penny of what you should be based on your value in the marketplace. I really like that suggestion because I think most salespeople, most entrepreneurs for that matter, they miss that opportunity. If you write articles, if you have YouTube videos, if you do some kind of radio show, if you do, you are inherently positioned as an expert. And all you have to do is follow up, follow through on that. Let me just take that just one step further. Dude. And you can just write a special report, 15, 20 pages, get, in, get it published on Amazon, whether in the ebook format or an actual physical book through CreateSpace, which is owned by Amazon, a print-on-demand thing. So you can actually print your little book, and instead of giving your business card to somebody, give somebody your book. It's like, hey, listen, people ask you, whoa, can I have your business card? Would you like an autographed copy of my book right. instead? Now you're like, boo. You're way off the charts. So that, yeah. that exactly that business person that's out there right now, uh, he's got a swimming pool business, right? And a prospective customer calls him, and they say, "Well, what have you got?" He goes, "Well, I happen to be the author of such and such book on swimming pools." Mm -hmm. That the the perception there is one of expertise, right? And it yeah. just it gives him another level of credibility to put his foot in the door. Absolutely. And when you do that as, as salesman, this is a, a, a good answer to your question is do a consultation with them. Find out what they want and see that they get it. Whether you may be able to provide the service, you may know somebody to joint venture with them to help them provide the services for the actual end user and you can still make money off of that. Right. I like that. And it, you know, it's pretty easy actually to publish something, to publish a report, a book, an ebook. Do you know how to use Microsoft Word? It's I've just that it. simple. <laughs> it's just that simple. And you, then you upload it to Amazon, and it's for sale on Amazon. And, and you can actually get it printed by Amazon, print on demand. And you can find somebody like on Elance, mm -hmm. uh, elance.com, and there's plenty of other websites that are out there. They can actually design a cover for you. So when you actually meet with your customer, you can, just, you can basically give them an autographed copy of your book, and your credibility factor is just completely off the charts. Now you're the perceived expert. Right. Yeah. And you would write the, the, the contents of that book, right, to be customer driven, customer oriented, customer answers, rather than me, 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 me. It's about the customer. Would you agree? Regardless, I don't care what uh, astrology sign you have, whether you're a Leo or an Aries, <laughs> you know, inside joke here. But uh, it doesn't really matter where you're from. It's not about you, it's about the customer and the benefits to the customer. So you have to show the customer. How can Paul help me in my, as, as a service or something like that? Uh -huh. So if you're in the pool business, I don't know if you're in the let's pool call, business. Let's call it the pool business for this example. For this example, if you're in the, pool, in the pool business, you give me a copy of your book. It's going to highlight all these things I'm looking for when I'm looking to have a pool, how to have it safer, whether it's pool safety, whether it's the chlorine levels, whether it's how do you deal with the change of seasons, things like that right. have a benefit to me. And they may not buy right that, that second, but you know, if they do, because they may not have a need, but when they do have a need, they're going to go straight to the bookshelf and pull out your book because you're the perceived expert on the field. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So that now the third thing, the third thing that an entrepreneur can do can, to get more clients in the next 30 days. The first thing you said was to identify the market. And the second was to put more value in the marketplace by positioning yourself as an expert. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing that a uh, entrepreneur can do to get more clients. Please write this down. Joint venture partners. You may not have prospects, but joint venture partners do have a list. They do have prospects that you can actually sell to. So you can partner with somebody that has a lot of clients and your, your product, your service would be great for them. So you go to that list owner, 
uh, whether it be a, a, a business, whether it be somebody on the internet, whatever it may be, and say, hey, listen, I have something that would be of value for your customers. So let's go back to our Paul Pools business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or Paul's Pool business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Paul's pools. I just, you know, every week I pull, I pull a business out of, out of my hat. Say right? that so, ten times really quick. Yeah. So this week <laughs> is the pool business, right? So how am I going to joint venture, or who am I going to joint venture with, in the pool business? In your example, mm -hmm. to expand my business. Pool supply companies. Okay. Uh, landscaping companies. They would have a need for pools, and that's just two examples. Builders, of, home builders. Home builders would be another great Remodeling example. Remodeling contractors. There you go. You're right on that. You're right okay. on the right track. All right. So whatever business that you're in, there are associates, affiliates, right. partners that you can that you can uh, partner up with and expand your business. Right? Exactly. So if a business was going to do something like next week, mm -hmm. Monday, they're going to wake up Monday morning. And which of those three would you suggest that they select to get started with to take that massive, inspired action that we spoke of earlier? What's the easiest one for an entrepreneur to get started with? Well, if you've done your proper marketing research, you just simply find out what people want and see that they get it. And that's by putting value in the marketplace. Have, it's a lot easier sale to have people call you than you pounding the phones or, or you're driving all over town doing cold calls. It's a lot easier to have people call you. So, and what's going to happen is if you do visit a business, what's the first thing people are going to do? They're going to Google you. So the more, information so you, the more information you have out there, it's called social proof. The more social proof out, that you have out there, you're more than likely to drive in a lot of people. I think this goes back to your point a few minutes ago, that if you're writing articles and contributing video blogs, mm -hmm. et cetera, then that moves you up the Google rankings, makes you more visible when someone goes and Googles your name or your business. Well, SEO is a whole other Oprah show. Right. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. <laughs> right. Or you can pay for ads on Google. That's you, another thing. That's, that's a great way of doing traffic, yes. Um, do you have some suggestions about social media or social just, you know, online marketing that would really help our listeners? Um, like, you know, your one or two top tips for uh, social marketing? Because I know you're really involved in the social marketing, social media marketing part of it. So share with us a, a tip or two. Yeah, you know, I actually have a company that handles all that kind of stuff. But uh, a tip that I would have is, number one, it, it goes with a tip and a mistake and how to okay. overcome that mistake. Number one is getting yourself out there, putting content out there, valuable content. That would be great for your prospect. And in social media, one of the biggest mistakes people make is what I call the buy my stuff syndrome. Hey, I just rented you on Facebook, buy my stuff. I just followed you on Twitter, buy my stuff. You know? <laughs> Instead of providing some sort of value. Yeah, and there's no relationships there. Got it. That's just like saying, I'm going to skip the first date, the first kiss, and go straight to the wedding night, you know? And unfortunately, that's how people use social media. They use it the wrong way. Okay, It's there to develop relationships. Good, so those are your three um, strategies for getting clients in the next 30 days. I wanna talk when we get back from the break about the critical mistakes that most entrepreneurs make when marketing their business. Because you write, there are some very crucial mistakes that they make, and I wanna cover those so that our listeners know what those are. When we return to the Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Radio Show. When it comes to understanding your credit, knowledge is key. If your credit score is holding you back, visit AllianceCreditRestore.com today. With 24-hour access to your account, constant updates, and one-on-one -on -one customer service, there's never been a better time to start living the life you deserve. Call Alliance Credit Restoration now at 702-834-8150. That's 702-834-8150. Or visit AllianceCreditRestore.com. Log on now and get your free report, The 7.5 Most Commonly Made Mistakes of Credit Repair. As more Americans become disillusioned with traditional investment choices, the trend of self-directed IRAs is growing. And no trust company is more preferred than Preferred Trust Company, LLC. With their 30 years of combined experience, Preferred Trust Company makes self-direction easy. And self-direction doesn't mean you're on your own. Self-directed simply means that you have complete control over selecting and directing your own IRA or 401k investments. And the team at Preferred Trust Company is with you every step of the way. 
A self-directed IRA with Preferred Trust Company offers you maximum flexibility, convenience, 24-hour access, and a host of tax advantages. Learn more about self-directed IRAs by downloading the free document, Self-Directed IRAs, taking financial control of your retirement at PreferredTrustCompany.com. Call Preferred Trust Company now and get started at 702-990-7892. That's 702-990-7892. Or visit PreferredTrustCompany.com. Business Radio. Here again, your host, Paul Montelongo. They say there's a halo behind me. I could not argue with them. There's a halo around me all the time. Welcome back to the Paul Montelongo Get a Grip Business Show, where the American Free Enterprise System is at work, hard at work here. Our guest today is uh, Mr. Blueprint. Mr. Blueprint, why don't you give our, our listeners the website Come on, the website for more about your work, please. Sure. Uh, it's uh, very simple, www.themrblueprint.com. So themrblueprint.com for more of uh, Richard Krofcheck's work on uh, how to market your business and blueprint your business. But you write an interesting book that I've read, and that is the uh, seven massive mistake marketing mistakes that businesses make. Mm-hmm. Um, there are critical mistakes that you write about that people make when marketing their business. Give our listeners an example or two of some of the great, the dumbest things that people do <laughs> when when trying to market their business. Because I got to tell you, I've seen I've seen a lot of marketing in my day. There are some really dumb things that people do. Um, You're make me feel well, this is the part of the show where if you feel bad, we're going to turn around and make you feel good. All Time right? to get a grip. Yeah, you <laughs> get a grip. Give us, give us the uh, uh, mistakes that people make, please. Well, let me give you two. Uh, one of them is very, very big, and that's doing everything yourself. Yeah. There are only 24 hours in the day, and I can guarantee that you're not getting almost anything done. You're probably pr- pretty much overwhelmed 24-7. You're not sleeping well. Because of all the stress. Well, I have to, because you'll be laying in bed saying, well, I have to do this, I have to do that. Doing everything yourself. So outsource, outsource, outsource as much as you can. Uh, but you know, a small business person, a small business entrepreneur, they, they will frequently come back with, well, I just don't have the money to pay that virtual yeah. assistant, or I yeah. don't have the money to pay that. It's service. like, okay, I've got more time than money, so why not spend my time rather than my money? Good point. So this is what I tell people that say that. There are going to be a few tasks that would take you an hour or two because you're not very good at it. If you outsource this, and the great thing about this economy, you can find quality content very inexpensively. There could be a project that would take you an hour or two. You could pay somebody to do it for five bucks. Is your time worth $2.50 an hour? Is that how, how low you're valuing yourself? So, And there's a thing called Fiverr. There's a website called Fiverr, F I V. ERR.com. You can find just about anything that you need for your business, and people will do it for only $5. Most people can afford $5. You can afford a, a latte at Starbucks or a Happy Meal. You can afford the $5 to help grow your business. Yeah, I think this is one of the crucial things that I learned many, many, many years ago. I have to tell the story. I haven't balanced my checkbook in 25 years. <laughs> Someone else has <laughs> for me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but it's not worth an entrepreneur's time yeah. to do tasks like that. I think in, in terms of, of the exchange there, an entrepreneur can say, I'm going to pay someone else to do the task of X, say, X, say balancing your checkbook, right? Mm-hmm. But while that's going on, I am going to do what I'm good at. I'm going to market my business. I'm going to promote my business. I'm going to write that article so that it gets published. I'm going to do something that is income producing. So it's not just a matter of handing off the task. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of replacing it immediately with a much more profitable activity as the entrepreneur. Exactly. You can look at it one of two different things. You could pay somebody or outsource it either per project like Fiverr, or you can hire somebody part-time or full-time very, very inexpensively. There's a website called onlinejobs.ph, onlinejobs.ph. And you can hire somebody full-time, part-time in the Philippines. Their primary language is English. They have a they have a bachelor's or a master's degree, like in journalism, and you and you'll end up costing you for 40 hours a week, maybe $300 a month. 
<laughs> to hire somebody. Great point. So a mistake is that most people take on way too much when they need to be outsourcing. Absolutely. Okay. Give us another mistake that most business people, most entrepreneurs make. Not communicating enough with your prospects and your clients. Think about this. You court your prospects, they become into clients. And then when they become clients, you, you drop off the face of the planet. Okay? It's like you're, you're still courting even after the sale. I'm hearing a lot of dating analogies here. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I do that because people can understand that. This is Vegas. Yeah, okay. And actually, okay. Read, I read an article in Vegas, uh, about Vegas, in Men's Health Magazine about a year ago that said that this is the 50th state, uh, I'm the 50th worst uh, city in the country for finding a single woman. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, oh, good. Good thing I moved to Vegas. This discussion? <laughs> <laughs> Which takes us to the next mistake that I hear here uh, uh, that you've written. Failure to upsell. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of goes with the dating, doesn't it? No. <laughs> Talk to us about failure to upsell, if you will. Well, if you go to Barnes & Noble, okay, they do very, very light upselling. You don't even know it. Would you like to join our preferred club for $25? You could save all these percentages and, and get free stuff all, all the time. They're, you're basically spending $25 to Barnes & Noble so they can upsell. So you also have bookmarks at the checkout counter. They also have chocolate. Who doesn't want to eat chocolate is your, when you're reading a good book? So the upsells can be very, very small to very, very large. I've seen some people have in their marketing funnel something that was only $7, but when it, they got through on through their marketing funnel, it was well over $1,000. Right. Huh. Well, at the beginning of that funnel, you know, it's a trust factor, right? When the mm -hmm. customer has trust, for you or with you for the seven dollar entry point mm -hmm. and then they get trust for the thirty nine dollar entry point and then the two hundred and forty nine dollars and then the ten thousand you know it just it just builds uh, the level of trust at, at each level right I think the fast food industry really perfected this uh, would McDonald's you like, would yes. you like fries with that also um, upsell right and now we see it everywhere I mean you are really missing an opportunity to increase your business if you don't ask for an additional pro, uh, pro, uh, product Oops, upsell, sale. Yeah. Right, sell. If you purchase anything off of one of these late night TV infomercials, they will sell you as much as, upsell you as much as on eight different products because they know once your credit card is in hand, you're more apt to buy something. As a matter of fact, you can ups, upcharge or upsell somebody about 80, uh, up to 80% of the time. So you're just leaving money on the table. So the prospects are going to spend money. Customers are going to spend money. The question is, is it going to be with you? or your competitors. Right. Let's back up just for a second there. You talked about not communicating enough with your prospects and or clients. I really right. agree with that. What ways do you recommend that an entrepreneur communicate with their client and what does that communication sound like? It really all depends on what you're selling, what you're offering. But in general, if let's just say if you're talking to a prospect, you know, statistically, You'll have to have seven touches with that prospect before they're going to buy, statistically. Touches. You're have to, touches. Okay. You have to contact <laughs> them seven times, whether it be through an email, through a phone call, postcard, whatever that may be. And then when they're a client, you know, that is the greatest wealth for any business that's out there. If you need a really quick influx of cash, simply go to your existing clients, offer them additional services. And they, they already like you, they trust you, they love you, you do a great job. They're more apt to give you money than the cold call where you're still learning uh, and they're still learning you about, the, about your credibility, about your social proof, things like that. So that's, that's just a gold mine of information, a gold mine for your bank account is your existing customer base because they already love you. And you nurture them and you coddle them. The puppy dog approach. A, an awe You know, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm so close to another <laughs> awe here. <laughs> that would be going over quota, but. <laughs> because it fosters the relationship. Exactly. And it's all sales about and business is based on relationship and the trust of that relationship, right? Trust is in any relationship, whether it's personal relationship, business relationship, a spiritual relationship, anything, everything is about relationships. If you don't nurture the relationships, if you don't feed it, if you don't water the plant, the plant's going to die. If you don't feed the dog, the dog's going to die. So exactly. treat your customers like a puppy and love them. Exactly. <laughs> so you have, you have an offer for our listeners? I do. If you go to my website, themrblueprint.com and subscribe by just offering your first name and email address, I'm going to email you the book that I have on Amazon right now called Seven Massive Marketing Mistakes Almost All Business Owners Make and How You Can Avoid Them. I think that's a valuable nice. resource for yeah. our listeners. Thank you very much. You know, each week our, 
our guests. They offer something really nice to our listeners. So we appreciate that and uh, the valuable resources and also your expertise and your wisdom on the matter. And we thank you for being here today on the Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Show. Thanks for having me. And thanks for putting so many awes in our show. (laughs) That's right. Of course, no Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Show would be complete without the segment we call I Am Sexy and I Know It. I'm sexy and I know it. I'm sexy and I know it. This is the... This is a segment of the show where I talk about businesses and or people and the money that they are making or their net worth and how they are sexy and they know it because of it. This week, Charles Barkley won the award for uh, the best studio analyst in the NBA for his NBA work on, the, on TNT. It is Barkley's second Emmy anom- uh, Award for broadcasting as a studio analyst. Nice. You, you watch Barkley? I do not. <laughs> Barkley talks about sports. I do not do sports. Barkley has parlayed his non-championship winning NBA career nicely into a broadcast career. That's cool. He currently has a contract with TNT estimated at $1.5 million per year and reportedly has a net worth of $30 million from his post-NBA non-ring bearing celebrity endorsements. (laughs) I might add that uh, Barkley is a regular contributor to the blackjack tables here in Vegas. Uh, self-confessing that in one sitting he handed over $2.5 million at the blackjack table. Congratulations, Chuckster. Okay. (laughs) Let me ask you a question, Heather. How would you like to live on the planet Mars? Is this for some kind of movie or something? Well, there's a company out there, an organization called Mars One, and they are sexy and they know it. About 78,000 people have applied to become the Red, Red Planet colonists with the nonprofit organization Mars One. Colonists? Col- colonists? They want to live on Mars. That is not sexy. <laughs> the opening, the uh, application process opened on April 22. Wow. They plan to put people on the planet in 2023. There is an application process. You go to their website. Uh, and you uh, download a one-minute video as to why you want to live on the planet Mars. Oh, my goodness, no. <laughs> the company says that, it will, that this endeavor will cost about $6 billion, and they plan to monetize their venture here by uh, paying most of their bills by staging a global reality TV event with cameras documenting all phases of the mission from astronaut selection to the colonists' first years on the red planet. This is network gone wild. <laughs> so if you're 18 years or older, you want a one-way ticket to Mars. This is oh, a one, one-way ticket. This is a one-way ticket. Right? Okay. They'll take seven years to train you. They're going to select four to six, uh, four to seven people. They will take seven years to train you. Wow. And then you will go be a colonist on the planet of Mars. <laughs> one-way ticket. Uh, there's, I guess they're sexy in Mars, too. Okay. 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 <laughs> and finally, there's money in them dare hills. <laughs> I said that. <laughs> All right. Fans oh are goodness. eager for a fourth season of the popular show Duck Dynasty. Oh, no. According to sources, the Duck Dynasty stars are hoping to renegotiate their existing contracts with a pay raise up to more than $200,000 an episode. Wow, this is like Friends League. The stars of the show will feel that it's justified because they finished season three in February with over 8.6 million viewers and a 3.9 rating among adults aged 18 to 49. Huh. You know, I just I just watched that show for the first time like about three or four weeks ago. Okay. And? <laughs> and moving on. Okay. When the network asked the Ducksters to back off from praying and gun-toting, Duck Dynasty star Willie Robertson uh, would not acquiesce. He said, prayer and, well, actually said, prayer and guns are a part of who we are. Nice. I think that's the way he said it. (laughs) He said, prayer and guns are a part of who we are. Willie Robertson has an estimated net worth of $10 million. Wow. Jace Robertson has an estimated net worth of $4 million. And Cy, the crazy weird uncle, brother-in-law character, whoever he is, has a net worth of more than $2 million. Apparently, wow. it is sexy to be a redneck. Can you be a redneck millionaire? That's crazy. <laughs> they are. <laughs> well, that's our show, folks. Remember to see the replay at paulmontalongolive.com. Follow me on Twitter at Paul Montalongo and on Facebook at Paul Montalongo Fan. 
Go out and make yourself and your enterprise an integral part of the American free enterprise system. It's the very best business system in the world. And above all else, remember to go big or go home. See you next week. This is Paul Montalongo, host of the Get a Grip Business Show. If you want more leads, more sales, and more closings, you must tune in to my Get a Grip Business Radio Show this Friday at 2 p.m. My guest will be Grant Cordone, author of the best-selling book, Sell or Be Sold. Grant will answer my hard-driving questions about what it takes to get more leads, more sales, and increase your closing ratios in this uber-competitive marketplace. If you want to maximize every sales opportunity, then tune in to the Paul Montalongo Get a Grip Business Show this Friday at 2 p.m. Hi, this is Dr. Rita. Remember to join me every third Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m. The What We Are Radio Show.